Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing the biggest Lego set I've ever reviewed on my channel. This is Harry Potter set number 75978 Diagon Alley. It was released in 2020. It's got 5,544 pieces. It's for ages 16 and up. Retails for $400 in the US and includes 14 minifigures. This is one of my favorite sets ever. I've been waiting for a large Diagon Alley set like this since like 2010, 2011 when the last one came out. And so I cannot wait to show you guys all of the awesome things in this set. So here's the Harry Potter minifigure. Most of the figures in this set are from Chamber of Secrets because the set kind of revolves around Lockhart's book signing, which makes sense. And then they just added Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. So this is actually an exclusive minifigure. This torso is brand new just for this set. They, they reuse it on Hermione and Ron as well. And I really love that because this looks like so many other Gryffindor torsos that we've gotten, but I really like that Lego took the effort to actually make it exclusive and make it slightly different because you'll notice it is closed up while we usually have these kind of robe torsos open and showing like their sweaters underneath. His face is actually new for the set. On the reverse, you've got this really awesome like dirty broken glasses face from when he tumbles through the fireplace in Borgen and Burks. I'm really glad that Lego went to the effort of creating a new face for him. What I don't love is you'll notice on the front that there are like a couple of little flecks around his mouth. That's not dust, it's actually like a printing error and you can't rub them off or anything. That's slightly disappointing to me, Lego's printing quality and some of their other quality control things have been failing a little bit in 2020, but that's something that I'll talk about later in the review. Here's Hermione. Again, she's a pretty basic minifigure, same torso as Harry. Her hairpiece is from 2018, and then she does have her typical alternate face on the back. Here's Ron. Again, same torso. I do like the sand blue legs. I think that looks really good. And then there's his scared alternate face. Here's Ginny Weasley. This is another exclusive variant, and the first time we're actually getting a young Ginny in the reboot wave, so I'm really excited about that. She's using the same hairpiece as older Ginny, although, like I said, that torso print is new. I'm honestly impressed with how many exclusive minifigures are in this set, although, again, it is mostly their torso because only one figure has leg printing. And she's one of the few to have an accessory. You can see that she's holding a copy of Magical Me by Gilderoy Lockhart. That is just a sticker. I do wish it was printed because it appears twice in this set, and I think they could have printed it and included, like, maybe another one. On the inside, there's nothing on that page either, which I think is extremely disappointing. They could have put a sticker of just, like, you know, scribbles of writing or used one of the printed pages that they have already. So I do think that that's a little bit disappointing. Here's Ginny's alternate face. And we do get an exclusive variant of Molly Weasley in this set as well. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that I'm a little bit disappointed that no one has a wand with them. Very few characters have accessories, although Ollivanders does come stocked with plenty of wands, so you can just poach the wands from all of the boxes in Ollivanders. So it's not a huge issue. And I think if you're a Harry Potter fan like me, you have a ton of extra wands. And I mean, you get a ton of extras in this set as well. So I'm kind of okay with that. I do like getting an exclusive variant of Molly. What I don't like is still no leg printing. This is a $400 set. Molly should have leg printing. That's just, that's just not cool. It wasn't nice in the burrow. Like she and Bellatrix did not look good without printing on that skirt piece in the burrow. And I don't think it looks as bad here because I mean, it is all just one consistent color, but she should really have leg printing. This Again, like I said, this is a $400 set. There should really be no excuse for that. That being said, I do like this minifigure. I think the color works really well on her, and that is a new color for that skirt piece. And here's a look at her alternate face. Here's Draco. He's another exclusive variant because of that torso. Again, I really appreciate Lego giving us minor variations on those Hogwarts robes. There is his back printing and his alternate face. And you'll notice that Draco does have some of those same problems as that Harry minifigure. His face is a little bit smudged around his eye and mouth. Here's Lucius. This is the only minifigure with leg printing in the set. I do think he looks really good. I love that torso. I really wish that they had done something cooler with his cane, like tried putting even just like a silver stud on top of it. Because, I mean, his snake head cane is iconic and just having it as a black stick is really boring. I also love that hairpiece that is Dumbledore's hair um, that was new in 2018, recolored into blonde. What I don't like is that face. Um, I think that's the Bruce Wayne face, not the Lex Luthor face, but 
that's just a really generic, boring face for our first Lucius minifigure since 2011. I really think they should have put in the effort and just made one more new face print for this set. Because again, it's a $400 set. You should not have such an iconic character reusing faces that have been in circulation since 2012. There's a look at his back printing. Here's Hagrid. This is the same minifigure as from the Great Hall and the Hagrid's Hut sets. He looks really great. I do like this new Hagrid. I love his pink umbrella there. If you don't know how he works, he uses short legs plugged into a new body, and then he has new arm pieces. The hands are a little bit squeaky when you turn them. I really hate that noise, but these arms are just connected with a Technic pin. That works really well. This hair mold was also new in 2018. That's what his face looks like underneath. And as you can see, he does not have any back printing, although he does have molded pockets, which is a really nice touch. Here's Ollivander, definitely one of the necessities for Diagon Alley. We did get an Ollivander in that microscale Diagon Alley set in 2018. I do think this one's a little bit better. I like the red a lot more than the brown for the torso. And as you can see, he actually has a brand new wand box piece. This mold was created just for this set. It is currently exclusive. And you get 10 of these boxes in the set. So the way this works is that there's a 1x3 tile on top and you just open it, and then you can store one wand in there. Again, I really love that. I was hoping that they would make a wand box piece, but I was kind of worried that they wouldn't, and I'm really glad that they included 10 of them. So back to Ollivander. You can see he does have a new face print as well, although he is using the same hair piece. I'm really glad that they gave him all new prints and that they didn't just reuse that gift with purchase minifigure, and I do like that alternate face on him as well. Here's Florian Fortescue. I think he looks really good as well. He appeared in like the background of one scene in Chamber of Secrets, I think, and they captured him quite well considering that we never really see him on screen. I'm really glad he's in the set. I remember him from the books. I thought it was really cute how we would always give Harry free Sundays when he was studying. And then I think it was horrible that he was like brutally murdered by Death Eaters, um, like off screen. So that's fun, but this is a really great minifigure. You can see he's holding a spoon. It's always great to see that piece. And that is the new ice cream cup piece that Ginny Weasley introduced in the second minifigure series. Here it's molded in trans orange. The pictures made it seem like it was trans red. I would have liked trans red a little bit better, but I do think trans orange still looks good. And you can see he's holding chocolate ice cream. That is a brand new face print as well. He has the same hair piece as Ollivander, just recolored into dark brown for the first time. And around the back, you can see he does have an alternate face. Here's the Daily Prophet Photographer. This is another exclusive character to, character to the set. I do love his old-timey camera. It's almost as large as him, but I do think it's a really cute little build. As for the figure itself, that's a great new torso. You can see he's using that wacky witch hat mold from Series 14 of the Collectible Minifigures. He does have a new face print as well, which is awesome. A lot of people think it's for Karkaroff because it looks a little bit aggressive for a photographer, so they think that this could be repeated on Karkaroff for, like, next year's sets. I don't really think that. It's possible, of course, but I feel like if they would have given us a Karkaroff, it would not be with the Deathly Hallows sets. I think this is going to be everyone's favorite figure. We finally have Gilderoy Lockhart in the flesh for the first time since 2002. Last time they made Lockhart, all LEGO minifigures were still yellow. So that was a really long time ago. It's fantastic to see an updated version here. And he's a really good exclusive for this set. You can see he is holding another copy of his book, which we already looked at with Ginny. The detail on his torso is really awesome. You can see that it is metallic and there are patterns within that metallic printing, which is, again, just really awesome. One complaint, I would have loved for him to have leg printing. I do think he looks a little bit plain. I wish he would have... You know, like, on Lucius, they use this piece that's very common. They reuse it on a bunch of figures. I wish they would have done something like this in purple for Lockhart. He has a double-sided cape, which looks really good as well. It's, like, gold on the inside, and then on the outside is that lilac color. There is his back printing. And here's his alternate face, which I think is one of the best faces I've ever seen on a LEGO minifigure. It's just so expressive. I love the way he's sweating. You can really tell how nervous he is. And I just think that that's perfect for him. Here's Fred Weasley. I love these minifigures in their, like, pinstriped suits. Again, would have loved to see leg printing continuing that, but it's not that big of a deal here because the printing is pretty subtle. He is using the same face as he does from the minifigure series, which is great because, you know, it keeps costs down for this set. 
And here's George Weasley. I like him a little bit better because his clothes under the vest stand out a little bit more. I think that looks really great. I love the little purple and the green there. And other than that, he's pretty much the same figure as Fred, although he does have his own face from the minifigure series, and I really like that they gave them four different expressions in total this time. Now, this set is absolutely massive, so I just want to talk for a second about its intended display form, which is like this. So Lego tells you to put all of these just straight in a line. We're going to look at each building individually, and then I'll show you guys some other display options. I do like putting it in a line like this. I know some people don't like that. I love the width it has. This thing is so long. This thing is over 40 inches long. As you can see, it, especially from the opening, it takes up most of my desk. But I think it looks great. And again, it's kind of hard to display an alley in other ways because you can't really have like rows of buildings facing each other. But yeah, I just want to show you guys it out in display like this because this is probably the last time in the review that you'll see it all in a line. So here's all of Vander's and Scribulus writing implements. This is definitely my favorite module in the set. I absolutely love Ollivanders. I really like just bay windows in general, and I think Ollivanders looks really great. So Weasley Swish and Weezes is my second favorite mo module. I'll just say that straight up, but I think that this is the cutest one. I would love to display this on its own. I just really, really, really like this structure. So starting from the outside, right off the bat, I will show you guys that this is compatible with the LEGO Modular Building series. Each of these is on a 16 by or a 16 by 32 base plate, which makes them half the size of a modular building. I'm really glad that LEGO built in that compatibility. The only thing I don't love about it, now bear in mind, I did want a lot of street. You know, I love the cobbled street. I think that that's a super important part of Diagon Alley that the 2011 set missed out on. But because it's compatible with modular buildings, it has so much street and not a lot of building depth. I really would have loved it if there had been a little bit less street. But, I mean, then it wouldn't really look as good when you connected it to the modular buildings. I can't show it connected to the modular buildings, by the way, because those are all at home. But I do wish that there was just a little bit less street. All right, so over here you can see you've got the Ollivander signs. It says, Makers of Fine Wands since 382 BC. Obviously, when you have multiple stickers across curved pieces, LEGO doesn't put one sticker across multiple pieces anymore, so the signs are a little bit broken up. I'll be talking about that more with Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. It is a little bit of a shame, but I don't think it looks that bad on Ollivander's. It definitely doesn't look that bad on Scribulus. It's really easy to get those lined up. But back to Ollivander's. I do love that sign that they have up there with his logo. I didn't even know that this like was the store logo, but again, I just think it looks really great. And then I love all the masonry bricks here, and I did not mean to push in the bay window like that, but I really love all of the masonry bricks. I think they add a really nice look. The only thing I would have changed is I think it would have looked better if that piece was in tan, dark tan as well. Although if it doesn't exist in that color, it's a waste of money to put it in a new color, which I get. So yeah, the other thing is that all of the doors open in, which again, this is super nitpicky, but I really would have liked it if they opened outwards because it's kind of hard to close them from the front because like they don't have a knob on it or anything. So you have to go all the way back around to push them in. Scribulus's door is like that as well. So taking a closer look at Scribulus, you can see that you've got this little lamp on the side. I really love that. You can kind of angle it a little bit. I do like this window as well, the way that they built it, like, really tight against the wall. You've got the sign up there. You have this little weathered board up here, which is exactly like how it is in the actual Diagon Alley. I went to the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London in summer 2019, and I remember just loving Diagon Alley. Over here, it says Galleon for Reading. And this is the first place I'm going to mention this problem, is that some of my stickers are, like, cut off awkwardly at the bottom. You can see it a little bit on this sign, how they're just slightly cut off, those ornate designs on the end. But it's a real problem later, so I'll bring it up again later. Then over here it says Fear of Flying Classes. And I just, I love all of these little signs sticking out of Diagon Alley. They really add to that, to, you know, to the aesthetic of it. And I think it's great. Through the window you can see a scroll... In the, you can see a scroll and some quills. Now, in the studio tour, there was like a really ornate mirror in the window. I wish they would have tried to replicate that here. And the other thing is that most of these buildings weren't actually next to each other or paired up with each other 
in the actual Diagon Alley that exists at Universal or at the studio tour. And I get that, obviously, LEGO just wanted to put in as many shops as they could and pairing them up was really easy. Scribulus and Ollivanders are right next to each other, at least at the studio tour. So having them together here makes perfect sense. So I really wish that they would have put Scribulus on the left side of Ollivanders because that's where it is on the studio tour and they are connected to each other. I don't really know why they didn't do that, but I would have liked to have seen it that way. Last things I want to mention on the outside are the owls. These are the most owls we've ever gotten in a reboot set since 2018. We've got this brown owl that looks awesome. We've got this owl from Lego City that's actually winking. I think it's really funny because people thought it was for Harry Potter, then it was for City, now it's in Harry Potter. And then we've got that new flying Hedwig mold. She's holding a Daily Prophet newspaper. Getting a new print of that would be nice because they've been really overusing that print since 2018. But I really like how she's on this little piece to make her look like she's flying. All right, so we're going to start at Scribulus for the interior. So down here on the ground floor, you can see that you have a ton of detail packed into these little rooms. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the door. But we've got this little table with a parchment and a lamp and a quill. Thought that would be easier to take out. And here's another one of those issues I was talking about with the stickers is the scrolls a little bit cut off in the corner. It's a lot worse on the one in the window. You can't really see it very well. And that's just like the kind of Ninjago style scroll that they've been doing for the last couple years. But that is a disappointing issue with the stickers. Then on the wall over here, you've got a selection of quills and then other pieces. Again, that looks fantastic. It was kind of a pain to line those up, but the finished product looks really good. So I absolutely love the interior of these shops, and I think Lego did a really great job. The second level is kind of interesting. You'll recall outside it said Galleon for a reading. And the Diagon Alley fortune teller was referenced in one of the books. I can't remember which one. But this is where that fortune teller gives readings. There's a little rug over here. There's a threadbare couch. I love that build and that sticker. This is an unprinted Skulkin head from Ninjago. Makes a really unique skull. There's a little potions bottle, cabinet, and then all the way in the corner, you can see that there's a fireplace, although there's no fire in it right now. I really love this detail. What I don't love is the lack of minifigures to go with Scribulus. I wish that there was just like two more minifigures in the set. All I want is a shopkeeper for Scribulus and quality Quidditch supplies, although it really would have been nice to get like the fortune teller as well. So here's the ground floor of Ollivanders. You can see this thing is blocking up like pretty much the entire floor. What this is is a staircase that can swivel out. I really love that feature. I like that it tucks away for easy displaying. And inside, Ollivander's is a little bit more cramped, but you can see detail in the window. You've got wand boxes both built up and with that new piece. You've got his lamps. There's more wand boxes all the way back there in the corner. Again, I just, I love all of the detail in Ollivander's. Even on the staircase, you can see the wand boxes are all piled up. And like I said in the start of this video, all of these wand boxes do have wands inside. So you get, I think, every color of wand that LEGO has made except for that rare purple one in this set. Over in this corner, we've got Ollivander's desk. So I'm just gonna pull that out so you guys can get a better look at that. There's the cash register, slightly cut off again. And then there's another piece of parchment also cut off at the bottom. I do like the design of this desk. I really like that um, the pattern that they got in the front. And I do think the register is a very unique build. And then over here, you have those wand boxes stacked up on the wall, like we've come to know from Ollivander's. And that is a really good look. <clears throat> if I'll get it to focus, there we go. And all of these boxes can be pulled out. Only the physical ones though. A lot of them are just brick built, but again, I completely understand why and they look really good. I do think the second level is a little bit cuter. You have a chair here in the corner that can swivel around. More boxes in the window, of course. There's an open box with a tan wand up there. Little candle. This drawer build I remember seeing for the first time in the Arkham Asylum breakout set. It's great to see it come back like that. Although I'm sure they've used it in other places in the last few years. And then you have Ollivander's little ladder. These are just two normal Lego ladder pieces clipped on top of each other that he can walk around on. Did not mean to drop that. There's a little lamp in the window and then obviously more wand boxes stacked up high on the walls. And again, you can pull this out and then let's just see what color wand is in here. It's another dark tan one. 
The last thing we're going to look at is the roof. This is the chimney for the fortune teller. I love the little staircase that they have going up here. And then I really love Ollivander's chimneys because Diagon Alley is a very wonky, like, magical street. Those shapes are hard to capture in Lego. They haven't really tried here, which isn't a problem. I completely understand why they wouldn't try to get all of those crazy shapes. But I really like the way that they built this chimney so that they could get it at a couple different angles. Here's Quality Quidditch Supplies. This is the second biggest building in the set after Weasley's Wizard Weezes, although it is wider. Now, a lot of people don't like that massive block of pink up there. I'm okay with it. It is a pinkish color in the movies. It is, it, it's supposed to be a paler pink, but I mean, this is like Lego's lightest colored pink, so I know why they use this color. I'm so glad they made Quality Quidditch Supplies because it's such a fantastic... It's just such a fantastic place in Diagon Alley, you know, it's like where Harry sees the broomsticks and you know how, how important Quidditch is to Harry, so I'm really glad that we got this in this set. There is a little bit more cobbling on this street than there was for Ollivanders and Scribulus. This is the entrance to the Daily Prophet. The Daily Prophet has its main offices in Diagon Alley, although even at like the Studio Tour and Universal, I think it's just a locked door that doesn't lead anywhere. This is the only door that opens out on the street, so I like it a little bit better. Um, and I do like that sticker on it. This sticker, this whole like edifice that they've built up here is exactly how it appears. I'm so impressed with how the designer got this. The only reason I don't like the block of pink is that I think it looks a little bit awkward to have the pink extend over the Daily Prophet door. So maybe they should have built that up gray, but then it wouldn't look as cool, I think. So a couple different problems, like with whatever you choose to do. Over here, you've got the Daily Prophet sign. Again, I love all of the signs in this set. Those are really nice stickers. Whereas for quality Quidditch supplies, you've got the really large Quidditch flag. Again, straight out of the actual alley. And then you have this other sign with the Hogwarts crest on it, which also looks great. These little lantern builds are found throughout the alley. I do like the way they're constructed, although I often knock them askew. I also like the way they built up the windows using these pieces to frame them. I do wish there was a little bit more of like this nougat masonry color breaking up the pink. I think it would have made it look better. And I did not mean to skip over the entrance to Quality Quidditch Supplies itself, but I love the shallow little staircase you have going up. And this is a place where the designer perfectly captured some of the wonky shapes of Diagon Alley, because you can see that this entire structure is just tilting forward. So you build it separately and you can't pull it straight, but it's supposed to just tuck perfectly at an angle. And I really love that. It looks fantastic. I love the sand green with the dark red. These are brand new printed wall panels for, just for this set. I do like the sign that they built up here with the quaffles and then with the snitch. This is the only snitch in the set though. I wish we would have gotten like one more in the actual building. This can be tilted out of place a little bit, but I mean, it still looks great. On the sides, you have little wanted posters for Sirius Black, which I think is a really, really nice detail. And again, that's something that you don't see when you actually have this joined up with the other structures. There's another, another one of those posters on the back of the Daily Prophet offices. And then all the way up here, you've got a shallow little third level. These use a printed newspaper piece from the Stranger Things set, which again, looks great. I don't think that this is on the actual building, but I understand why they added it in the set. It's so that it can match up with the back of Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. And this chimney also looks really nice as well. It's like really large and it does stick up more than anything else in the alley. So here's the interior of quality Quidditch supplies. I do think it's a little bit sparse. I love the detail that they have in here, but I wish they just had a little bit more. You can see the QQS rug when you enter. That looks great. You have this little rack of beater's bats. But the most important part about this set is that it does include, for the very first time, Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw Quidditch robes. Here is the Hufflepuff robed minifigure. I really, really love this inclusion by Lego. I think that people have wanted these for such a long time and they look absolutely perfect. We'll see the Ravenclaw one up close in a second, but this will be coming in a book with Cedric Diggory in his Quidditch uniform next year. The only other detail down here is this broomstick in the window. They've attached that little Technic piece to make it look like the footholds, which I appreciate. And then you're supposed to have, I think Hogwarts Quidditch uniforms down here, although some of these colors don't make sense, like the gray for Ravenclaw. On the second level, you have the Ravenclaw Quidditch uniform. I like this one the best out of all of the Quidditch uniforms because I am a Ravenclaw. Again, I'm just really glad that LEGO gave us these. 
I know that it sucks that they're exclusive to this set, but given that they're already appearing in cheap $8 books next year, I don't think it's something to really worry about. I'm sure everyone will be able to get their hands on these uniforms very soon. In the middle, you've got that sign that says feel free to test fly any of our brooms. I love that piece. It's coming from Super Mario and it looks great. Also a broom in dark brown for the first time. Kingsley also had one of these in the minifigure series, but I think that looks really good. And then you have the broom in black, so you get all three colors. I don't think they've made any other colors of brooms. Then in this chest, you have a beater's bat and a couple of quaffles. Again, kind of wish that there was a snitch included in this set. Sorry, having a little bit of trouble focusing. And then over here, you have even more Quidditch uniforms piled up on the walls. That looks like a Ravenclaw one, but I really feel like all of the ones on the ground floor should have matched Hogwarts houses. Then in the tiny little third level, you have a rat going for some cheese. You've got some cardboard boxes stacked up. And then you do have little stacks of newspapers, although those just are the same Harry Potter print. So I do wish we would get a new print, although I do respect how many versions of that newspaper this set gives us. So here's the Daily Prophet offices. It's kind of hard to see inside because it is so tall and narrow. There's really nothing in here. There's just a little crate full of newspapers of Harry. Again, there's only one of those actual newspaper pieces. The rest is just built up. I do wish they would have given us like a little bit of an interior. Like couldn't you have given us like a desk chair and read a Skeeter? But you do have this cobweb up in the attic area, I guess. And then on the wall, you actually have this really awesome sticker that I think is gonna be really hard to see, but it's basically just got a bunch of different papers and like posters for Sirius. And it's just a lot of really awesome detail. Like it says, he who must not be named returns. It's got, like I said, the Sirius poster. So I really like that sticker. I do kind of wish it was on the outside of the wall. And then looking at the roof, you've got some more newspapers stacked up here. And then you do have a little entrance into that quality Quidditch supplies attic area. Here's Flourish and Blots and Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. I really love this section, as I do with all of the sections, but it's probably my least favorite of the set. So Florian's Parlor is super cute. I really love it. I wish I had a bigger role in the movies, but they really made a nice awning using like lipstick pieces on these little hinges. You've got these two chairs outside, although I wish they were like kind of nailed down because they are very free floating. And you've got a little table. I love the colors of Florian's using that like cool yellow. Then over for Flourish and Blots, again, new printed. These are like the big one by six by like seven or something wall panels, or I think one by six by five. They look really good as well because they kind of match quality Quidditch supplies. You've got like these little built up boxes of books in front of the store, which I again think is just great attention to detail. I also love the way that they built like these I don't, I, they're, they're not gargoyles. I don't really know what to call them. Just like decorations on the front. They used flippers and then this black dragon head hilt piece from Ninjago. This window, I like the way it comes out of the building a little bit. I don't love all of the gray over here. I think it looks out of place. They have little signs in here. It says bookseller, reading room, book binders, and that just repeats. Those are all stickers. But again, the way that that's built is really interesting. And then you do have the large Flourish and Blot sign over here. As for Florian's, you don't actually have his name anywhere on the ice cream parlor, but you do have one of those lanterns. I like the masonry bricks on the second level. And then you do have a really cute brick built sign with those two dining chairs and then the table with the ice cream in the middle, which is again, straight out of the movies. This is also the only section to not have a flat roof. I love the way they did Florian's roof. It reminds me of the Privet Drive set. And then Flourish and Blots also has a sloping roof, but again, I just think Florian's is more interesting. Although I do like that they have sloping roofs and not just flat ones like the rest of the buildings. And on the side of Flourish and Blots, you do have another wanted poster for Sirius Black, although this one's printed on white and not on that tan color. So here's the interior. We'll start with Flourish and Blots and then work our way over to the ice cream parlor. So the first level of Flourish and Blots does have a lot of detail. I think it's hilarious that this little building has more books than the entire Creator Expert Modular Bookshop set. This pillar is built up really nice, although it is kind of hard to get everything lined up perfectly straight. You've got signs that say Dragons and Alchemy up here. Again, those are exactly how the signs look in the movie. I love this stack of books, including one like falling off of the top. I think it looks fantastic, and I just really, really love that detail. Over on the side here, you have a brick-built bookshelf, which again, just looks really, really awesome. 
And in the front of the window, you have a little sticker that says Magical Me. Although this isn't an actual book, it's just a two by three tile kind of meant to be on display. You know how books are usually on display in the front of bookstores. You also have this little side build that's separate from the rest of the build. This is Lockhart's table for book signing. I do love how they have like stacks of, this is supposed to be Magical Me obviously, built up here. But I wish that there was kind of a place to put this. You can put it straight in front of the door if you want, but it doesn't like, it kind of blocks the way. It doesn't sit down all the way. And I just don't really want little floating furniture pieces like that. Although it is nice that it's removable. You can pull down this one's staircase. I really like that they have different mechanisms for hiding the stairs, and I do really like the railing on this one. So at the top of the stairs is a nice stickered 2x4 tile that says Flourish and Blots on it. I really like that piece. Meanwhile, in the window, you actually have the only other opening book piece of the set, and that just has one of those regular Wingardium Leviosa printed tiles that we've seen in Harry Potter before. We also have a little lantern back there. This is just on like a little one by one clip. And then we just have more stacks of books, not quite as precariously balanced as downstairs and another bookshelf in the corner there. And I have to say, I do really like these book, these bookshelf builds. And I do think it's just really funny that Flourish and Blots has so many more books than the actual modular bookshop that Lego made. And now we're making our way into the ice cream parlor. And I do have to say, this is like one of the cutest little builds in this set. I really love it. First, we have that like cool yellow door and like kind of like the outside wall decoration. And that's a great color. It's a really refreshing feel. This is also the only floor of the set that's tiled over with like the black and white checkers. I do kind of wish the entire set was tiled like a modular building, but I'm also fine with it being studded. Over here, we have like a little dessert topper. I'm not sure if this is supposed to just hold like other treats. The only thing I don't like about this build is that it's not secured very well because it's just on a black lipstick piece. Meanwhile, at the back here um, of the serving counter, we have like a little cup with some ice cream in it. And then on the walls, we do have several more cups, including another one of that brand new mold. That's great to see. It would have been nice to get even more of those new molds in this set, but I'm glad that we got two. The only thing that's missing here for me is actual ice cream. There's nowhere to serve the ice cream from, which I think is a little bit odd. Um, so like maybe they could have built something into the counter, made the counter a little bit bigger, because you don't really need like a three by six space back here just for serving. And I've gone ahead and removed the counter just so we can get a better look back there at that sticker. That's a really great menu. You can see that it's got a bunch of different flavors, including a really weird one with bat juice and earwig. So I think that that's like a great design. And this really continues to remind me of a modular building because up here we have a little bit of living space. So we have a nice rug on the floor, a little table with a teapot and teacup, a chair built um, like on a Technic pin, which is really interesting. And then in the corner, we have like this great design for a lamp. So I really like this little apartment space. The chair, seeing the Technic pin through there isn't like a great like thing to look at. However, this build is really awesome. I haven't seen a chair made like that before. There's nothing in the other corner, but you can open the outside windows from here. And now we come to arguably the best part of this entire set, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. This is the first time that we're getting the Weasley's Joke Shop as a Lego build, but even better than that is all of the new lavender pieces that Lego has thrown in here, including like those one by four masonry bricks. This thing is just really striking on display between like the purple, the black, and then the bright orange. So I can't really decide whether this or Ollivander's is my favorite build because I think it like changes every day. But this is definitely just like an insanely good Lego build. So starting on the ground floor, you can see that there's very little street out here because this does take up like the most of this base plate. Other buildings run all the way to the edge, but this one comes out a lot more. It does look a little bit odd because you are missing like the other row of windows. However, that's not something that bothers me too much because every building is kind of missing a level and I would not have sacrificed like taller buildings to get less of them. I really love the way that they made the windows that we do have though, because like these gentle curves on the upper windows is really impressive. But then just like the tower of windows over here, which is so iconic to Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, just looks fantastic. I Like I said, I really love all of the orange. The only complaint I have here with the exterior of the shop 
is that the stickers don't really match up. So obviously, LEGO doesn't do stickers across multiple pieces anymore, so down here, the lettering is broken up between the different curves, and then it's extremely broken up at these edges. I don't really know any other way they could have done this, but that does bother me. However, what's worse is, like, the stickers over here. So continuing my problems from, like, Ollivander's, you can see that, like, the E on this sticker is just halfway cut off, which looks really bad. The gap is already bad in the word, but then having, like, that edge of the E cut off is pretty irritating. And so that happens down here as well with the Z. And so I'm not really happy about that. I've gotten three replacement sets of stickers from LEGO, and all of them have this cutting issue. Again, for a $400 set, you shouldn't be having, like, those kinds of quality control problems. Out here, we do have this little balloon that's outside the shop. Building this was kind of a pain. You can rotate it a little bit, although it's not too loose. But it was a pain because, like, when I put it in, like, the entire wall just broke because it's a very, like, small, finicky build and then, like, just the way it's attached. Over here, you do have another one of those, like, outdoor lanterns similar to on the ice cream parlor. And then at the very bottom, you do have a couple of entrances. So this is kind of, like, the side entrance. And you can see I actually have Luna from the minifigure series in there. Um, forgot to take her out. But you can start seeing into the shop over there. And then we do have what I think is supposed to be like the main entrance over here. And that just opens up again, like kind of into the same space. But before we get inside, we do need to talk about this large figure in the window. So you can see that the Weasleys obviously have this mascot in, in their shop. It's supposed to be one of them. And I do like the way that LEGO built the head, although because it is completely brick built, like, I feel like the eyes aren't as, aren't achieved as well as they could have been. But the entire thing is kind of built with some weird Technic pieces, and then everything's at an angle. It uses a ton of stickers, but it is a pretty impressive build. Um, you can see his legs down in there, and those are also stickered. It's kind of hard to see once the whole thing is done, but building it is pretty special. However, what's even more special is that this does have a built-in play feature, the only play feature of the set, really, where when you move this little lever on top, the figure will raise his hat. There's no bunny underneath the hat, like in the shop, but it will stay up. I'm sorry, I meant, like, as in real life. Real life, as in the real world of Harry Potter. So it is kind of disappointing that there's no bunny, but I also don't know how they would have fit it, and I'm pretty happy with that play feature. You can adjust the hat a little bit and, like, adjust the arm, and the last outside section actually looks really fantastic. I, I really love this side of the build because of the stickers. So we have like that large like kind of graffiti. We have that dark mark thing advertising. I think they sold like dark mark like candies or something. And then an ad for Jinx off. And it's just the gray, the lavender, and then those large stickers really make this side of the build great to look at, even though it is kind of like the part that you're never really going to see. And here's the roof of the shop. I do really like this, the like sloping curved lavender pieces. And the roof is like nice with that tile and then studded like difference. We do have a very small roof section over here as well, but the top is just completely flat. And there's a quick look at that raising hat mechanism. Off to the left of the shop, we do have the entrance to Nocturne Alley. Now this is a great little area. I think that LEGO did a great job making this stand out from the rest of Diagon Alley. You know, we have those gray masonry bricks, and then we have like just all of these little pieces that contribute to making this look a lot more worn and like run down than the rest of Diagon Alley. There is a tilting window up here that just rests against like this headlight brick kind of. This is a technique that returns from Barracuda Bay, and I really appreciate that because it looks great. And then we even have just that Nocturne Alley sign in the corner. You can turn that anywhere you want. And I really hope that this is hinting towards a future Borgen and Burks set, because I would love to be able to attach something to like the back of this uh, Weasley's Wizard Weezes build. Here is the full interior of this build, and you can see it is the only one with three levels, even though it is missing that extra row of windows. There's really nothing to see behind Nocturne Alley, but I just wanted to show like that little window alcove. So starting on the ground floor, you can see that this build is just packed full of details. So underneath the stairs, we just have a pile of boxes, including dancing doxies. Over here, this is actually the cash register, and you can kind of just move this entire build. You can see that is just a sticker and then a couple of those printed like caution tile pieces. 
Then over here, we have like this entire like tower that is supporting the second floor. Those are actually Minecraft like head pieces. I think they're like baby zombie heads and they are just stickered. Then on the lower level, we have an orb build. And then up here, there's just minifigure heads with like some bottle toppers. We also have a lamp swinging out over here. All the way in the back, there's just another row of like just bottles and like boxes and stuff. I really love those sparkly pieces especially. And then in the other corner, this is actually a detachable build. This is the Love Potion stand from Half-Blood Prince. That's a great build. I don't love that it's detached the same way I didn't love the detached desk in Flourish and Blots. But I do really love this thing because it looks fantastic and I am glad that there's an empty space back there because it's really easy to just throw that in there. And then if I like hold this right up to the camera, you can kind of see the legs of like the tall figure way back there, if I can try to focus it. Um, so you can kind of see those stickers a little bit better, but it's really hidden back there as you can see. The stairs have some fantastic stickers that say, you know, more magical mayhem up, up, up. I really love that because, again, like, the stairs are a pretty recognizable part of Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. And as you get up to this landing, you do actually have, like, this stack of balloons on the side. I'm not sure if these are supposed to represent anything in particular, but they are just spring green and then black, like, BB-8 body pieces. Great to see those recolored, and you can kind of move them a little bit. The other thing that you can do is you can actually just tuck them into the shop to get them out of the way for when you put these things back to back. And I really love that feature. The only thing I don't like about these is that it's really easy to just break these off and so they kind of go falling everywhere a lot. Here's the shop's second level. Now the problem here is that this large staircase kind of obscures the interior a little bit, but in the corner we do have like these kind of like pinwheel pieces with stickers on them. Back here, there's actually a bunch of boxes, and these are, like, the basic Blaze boxes. Those are all stickers, but they are, like, they are just, like, fantastic details. It's it's super hard to get around this staircase. In the center, we do have another one of those small, like, tower builds like we had downstairs. Not sure what this, like, um, good is supposed to be. I, I don't know a lot of, like, the objects here, but there's, like, crystals on the bottom. There's a goblet in the center. And then behind, like, the figure's torso in the window, there's just a lot of different boxes stacked up. So there's still a ton of detail back there. It's just kind of a shame because you can't really access it. And speaking of the staircase, we do have another lantern. And I really love, like, all of the cone builds for the banisters and staircases up here. These are just regular Lego staircase pieces with, like, these railings attached. And I do really like that look. I'm glad that they included the stairs because, like I said, they are a very recognizable part of the build. It, it just sucks that they block, like, minifigure access. It would have been great if they had made this, like, easily removable, but that was probably too difficult. And all the way upstairs, we have yet more things to look at. So there's a little geode up here. I really love that piece from LEGO City. Then we have more boxes over here. And then just more random boxes not stickered lying on the floor. More of those little cheese slope pieces. And then we actually have a couple of dark blue nano figures in there. And then way back there, you can kind of just see the mechanism for, like, the hat lifting. Um, if I can get it, just get that to focus in the corner. And so you can kind of just see it move, like, when you're moving the piece on top. All right, so now the big question kind of becomes, how can you display this? I might do a separate display video showing how I do it, like, in my apartment, or I just might include that as part of my apartment tour. But thankfully, LEGO does give you a couple of options. So you have the option of displaying it just straight in a line like I had at the start of the review, but there's actually two other ways that you can do it. Personally, I think that this is one of the absolute best ways to display this set because this is just, like, freaking insane to me. Like, the fact that you can join these things together and then face them towards each other to make an alleyway is such a great feature and it's really, it's really nice because, yes, having all the buildings in a line isn't really an alley, but this is, like, what you want to see. The bad part about this is that, as you can see, it's a very, like, short width, except it's extremely deep. So it would be really hard to be able to display this. But, I mean, I just love looking at it, like, this way. So I will keep it on my desk like this for, like, a few days. And I do want to take the camera off the stand and just take you guys through the alley. 
So being able to put this set kind of like face to face and make an actual alley is I think one of the best features because it just creates like this bustling like minifigure filled street and it just looks like a lot of fun. You know, you have all of the signs hanging up like this is the perfect Diagon Alley look. The disappointing thing is you can't really see it on a shelf, so there's no good way to ever display this. I did try to put like quality Quidditch supplies across from Ollivander's because that is the side of the street that it's on, but it is like a little bit hard to get a perfectly accurate alley this way. So I wonder how they're going to do Gringotts because having Gringotts at like the end of this would just make for the best display piece, but I think they're going to just kind of tack it on to like the end of like the super long build because there's not really a better way to do that. So let's move on to option number two, since this isn't really feasible for long-term display. So the other big display option is basically the exact opposite of what we just did, because you can actually put these buildings back to back and create kind of like full modular buildings out of just like two of these builds. So Flourish and Blots attaches to the back of Ollivanders and Scribulus, and I'm actually just going to pull these apart, and you can see that... Um, Weasley's Wizard Weezes just goes on to the back of quality Quidditch supplies. So I do really like that this option exists as well, although it's not something that I would necessarily choose, because they do match up fairly well, like just roof-wise, but then actual build-wise, it's just kind of awkward. This would make it easier to put in a modular display if you only have like two of these that you really like. For me, Ollivanders and Weasley's Wizard Weezes are definitely my favorites, but that doesn't mean that I don't want to see the other two, if you know what I mean. But I do like just that, again, that they offered this option because it is much easier to integrate with the modular buildings. So here's a closer look at how Ollivanders and Flourish and Blots look like when they're lined up back to back. I do really like that. However, I think that I like Weasley's Wizard Wheezes and Quality Quidditch Supplies even more. So that is why Quality Quidditch Supplies has like this kind of extra roof bit on top. But what I love the most is what happens to the Nocturne Alley entrance. So if you go like all the way down in there, if you'll focus, thank you, that just goes straight into the Daily Profits little like alcove. So you can see um, like the boxes of newspaper. And again, I really like that because it does look like it's leading to an alleyway, even though on the other side, it is just that Daily Profit door. So I really like that you can put these back to back, even though I don't want to do that. And before we finish out this review, there was a secret box number 21 in the larger box. It wasn't a bag, and it said Silencio on it to keep it a secret. This is an exclusive Harry Potter minifigure dressed in, like, Dudley's clothes from Philosopher's Stone, again with that brand new face print. And this is just a great exclusive figure. People were wondering where it was when this set was announced, and I don't really get the purpose of keeping it a secret. I didn't bother to put a spoiler alert or anything, because at this point, the set's been out for about five months. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows about it. But it's just great to get an exclusive Harry, and you can see he does have that same alternate face. And I do think it was cute that they had, like, a little surprise that they didn't really put in the official images, even if, like, reviews kind of spoil it for you. And here's the little build. This is just so cute to me because I really love it when like adult oriented Lego sets have little display stands and this is a print and again just getting a display stand like this in Diagon Alley isn't something that I expected but I'm really glad that we got it. You can adjust this a little bit um, to whatever angle that you want and so you can put Hagrid on the stand and then Harry right next to him. And that's just kind of like the perfect finisher to this set. So I'm really glad that LEGO included something kind of deluxe like this. There are just a ton of extra pieces for this set, including some really nice ones like the extra quills, spoons, and teacup. These two are legit extras. I didn't miss putting them anywhere, so that was kind of weird to me. Here's the box for this set. It's absolutely gigantic. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same size as the Hogwarts Castle box. Now, the art is a little bit awkward. I don't think it does the set justice because it really compresses, um, like, Flourish and Blots and then uh, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Like, you really don't understand how big Weasley's Wizard Wheezes is from this box. The other thing is that I do feel like it's a little bit light on minifigures, and I feel like you can really see that on the box. Like, it doesn't look populated. When I had it, like, facing each other like an alley, the street really looked a lot busier. 
Um, so I just, I do think the box art could have been a little bit better, but I mean, it's not like they could make like a super long $400 box. So I get that it is kind of difficult to squeeze this onto a regular square box. On top, you actually have a couple of scenes as well as all the minifigures names. And then I'm a lot happier with the back because, you know, you can just see how much there is to do now. Although I still feel like they could have included even more just little images showing off the interiors because there is a lot more to explore from just these images. This is like the look of the set that you want at the bottom with like everything just laid out in a line. I'm just, I'm really happy with this set and it was just such a thrill to like see it all laid out like that on the box for the first time. So exactly like the 2018 Hogwarts Castle, you get four instruction manuals here, one for like each different module. That's great because it allows you to build with other people. I don't build with other people, so I, I would have been fine with one manual, but I mean, that would have been ridiculously huge. So I do like the separate ones. I also really like how it's like just the one in color of whatever you're building and then the rest are kind of just like blueprints. And we do have information about like pretty much every building in these. And so I do really appreciate like those details in more expensive sets because, you know, like I said, it just contributes more towards that like collector, like adult feeling. The Weasley's Wizard Wheezes one is the largest by far. And so on the inside, we do just have a little bit of information. But then at the back, we actually have some more details. So first of all, back here, we do have like the instructions to build that second smaller stand so you can see that's kind of what that silencio box looked like and then we do have the minifigure guide at the back over here as well also interestingly this isn't like a drawing like everything else in the instructions it's actually a photograph and then we actually have like a whole thing about the design team i think that this should have come at like the start of the first manual but it's really great to read about you can see some like prototype models back there um, prototype like sculpts over here and then at the back it does show you how to join the buildings together. So I really appreciate all of the extra details packed into these manuals. All right well that was an insanely long review so thank you very much if you stuck all the way to the end but to wrap up my thoughts I just I love this set. This is like the crown jewel of Harry Potter for me. I really love the $400 Hogwarts Castle as well. But this set for $400 just gives you so much. I do think $400 is a great price for this. Especially if you just think about it as like four separate $100 modules. I think that like each of these buildings, if they sold them for $100, they'd be a really good deal. I could see each of these buildings selling on their own for like $130 to $150. So honestly, if this set had been four or sorry, $500, I still think I wouldn't be upset about the price. But it's just amazing. There's so much to see and do. It's a perfect display piece. It's also a perfect play piece. And I know that some people would have preferred if they had just sold these separately so that you could build up your own Diagon Alley. But I, I don't know. I kind of like getting it all as one set. Like it's just, it's really special to me. And most of the minifigures here are exclusive. There's a bunch of new pieces. So I'm really happy overall. However, I do have more disappointments than I expected. First of all, the minifigures, there are like not enough in my opinion. I know that there are 15 minifigures in this $400 set, but I really think it should have been more like 20 because I just, I think we needed like a shopkeeper for Scribulus, a shopkeeper for quality Quidditch supplies. We just needed like a couple more minifigures, like even just like two or three more would have made this a lot better. Then the other issue is just like reused pieces on the figures. You know, like the, the stupid face on Lucius Malfoy, Molly's unprinted skirt piece. Those are both things that are irritating for a $400 set. What's even more irritating for a $400 set is all of the quality issues in this set. The stickers being cut incorrectly. I mean, you're already giving us so many stickers for an expensive set, and I'm not usually one to complain about stickers, but when they don't even look like they do on the box and not like a color thing, but like a lettering thing that's like genuinely like really important, that bothers me a lot. And again, I've requested replacements and they're all like that. They're all messed up. That's kind of inexcusable in my opinion. The minifigure face prints, like seven of my figures in this set have like fuzzy smudged and blotched face prints. Again, seven out of the 15 minifigures in this set had like fuzzy face prints. These issues, I feel like, have been really prevalent with LEGO sets in 2020, and so I'm really disappointed that that there were, like, so many issues in this $400 set. I was also missing a piece on Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. 
luckily I had one with me, but I mean, I'm at school. I don't have access to my full Lego collection. So if I didn't have that, I just wouldn't have been able to finish building Weasley's Wizard Wheezes for like three weeks until I got the piece from Lego. So I do really appreciate their customer service department, but I just wish that like these issues weren't popping up more and more, especially with the prints. The missing piece doesn't bother me too much, but those prints and stickers really do bother me. However, I don't have any issues with the actual design of the set. Um, I really love it. I've been waiting for a Diagon Alley since, you know, 2011, since I never got the original. And I really hope that the $250 direct-to-consumer set coming this summer is going to be a Gringotts. So that pretty much sums up my thoughts. I think that if you're a major Harry Potter fan, you need to have this. So I definitely encourage saving up. I would buy this over the $400 Hogwarts Castle because I just think it gives you a little bit better value for your money. But that's it for today. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this review and that you liked watching it, even though it was so long. And I will see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.